All right, welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. Today we're doing the eighth video in a series of ten. Today we're going to be talking about boiling point elevation and freezing point depression problems. So, here we go. Bam! But first, let's do a couple of applications so you know why boiling points and freezing points are so important. Here's a simple distillation apparatus. If you have two different liquids with two different boiling points, you can separate those two different liquids. It's a wonderful application. The next application was, is with fractional distillation. And in the industrial world, we separate like oils and gasoline and all kinds of petroleum products with fractional distillation methods with various different boiling points. Then our next application is the most fun that we can have, and that is making homemade ice cream. And that's a freezing point depression example. All right, fantastic. So let's first talk about the equations that we're going to use to do these mathematical problems. So here we go. Bam. So the boiling point is equal to the normal boiling point plus the change in temperature of the boiling point. Okay, that is this is always going to be a boiling point elevation. Do you see that plus sign right there between the normal boiling point and the change in temperature of the boiling point? That is if you add something to the solvent, it will increase the boiling point always. The change in temperature of the boiling point is equal to the constant for the boiling point. That is for the solvent plus the I for the solute. That's the Van't Hoff factor. We've already discussed that in a previous video. You might need to review that times the molality. You, we've already discussed that in a previous video. You might need to review that as well. So here's some water. If I were to add any solute to water, I will actually increase the boiling point of the water. So that's why we add salt to water to increase the boiling point of the water. So the next one is a freezing point. The freezing point is the normal freezing point minus the change in temperature of the freezing point. Freezing points are always a freezing point depression. That is, if I add something to a solvent, I add a solute to a solvent, I'm going to depress or decrease the freezing point. The change in temperature of the freezing point is equal to the constant of the freezing point, that's for the solvent, times the Van Hoff factor of the solute times the molality. And this salt spreader is a great example of a freezing point depression problem. The salt spreader is adding salt to the roadways to decrease the freezing point of the water, so therefore it needs to reach a lower temperature in order for you to get black ice on the highway. I want you to look at something on the change in temperature of either the boiling point or the freezing point real carefully and look for your favorite friend. And her or his name is going to be Kim. Do you see the word Kim right there? That way you can always remember that equation and Kim is close to your heart. Absolutely. We're going to do two problems. One is a boiling point and one is a freezing point okay, problem. So let's do one of these. Here we go. Bam. Freezing point de depression. Calculate the freezing point of a solution containing 102 grams of ethylene glycol, that C2H6O2, in 250 grams of water. The table value for the constant for the freezing point is 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out what's the solute and what is the solvent. So I'm going to look at the 102 grams of ethylene glycol and the 250 grams of water. Which one is the greatest and which one is the least? And then that will answer which one is the solute and which one is the solvent. That's why I determined that the 102, the least abundant component, is my ethylene glycol. My most abundant component at the 250 grams is my water, and that is the solvent. So now I'm going to start plugging into equations. So here we go. The freezing point is equal to the normal freezing point minus the change in temperature of the freezing point. The change in temperature of the freezing point is equal to the freezing point constant for the solvent times the I, that's the Van Hoff factor for the solute, times the molality. So let's figure out what values we actually have. So first of all, for the solvent, what is the normal freezing point of water? That's right, that's zero degrees Celsius. This is going to be an exact number because we were not given a value for this previously. We actually already also have the constant for the freezing point, and that goes right there. That's the 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. And we need to figure out what is the solute. We already figured that out, but here's the formula. And if you look back to the uh, lecture on the Van Hoff factor and determining the I value for this, we actually already did this on that uh, lecture. And the Van Hoff factor for ethylene glycol is 1. 
Okay, now we need to determine what the molality is. And the molality, if you remember from that previous lecture, is the moles of solute divided by the kilograms of water. If you look on this problem, then we have 102 grams of ethylene glycol. We're going to convert that into moles. That will be my numerate, numerator term. And then I got 250 grams of water. I'm going to convert that to kilograms, and that will be my denominator term. And I will get the molality. And then I will have all the components that I need to plug into this mathematical equation to solve for the freezing point. So I'm going to review this slide here real quick, and then we're going to go on to the next slide. Here we go. Bam! Here's my equation for molality again. That's moles of solute, that's ethylene glycol, divided by the kilograms of water. I'm going to first solve for the moles of the solute. That's taking the 102 grams of solute, that's the ethylene glycol, divided by the molar mass of the ethylene glycol. That will give me 1.64 moles of ethylene glycol. So now I have 1.64 moles of ethylene glycol. That's my numerator term. I'm going to get my denominator term. I'm going to take the 250 with the decimal grams of water and convert that into kilograms. And that also has three significant figures. Okay, that number, 0 0.250 kilograms of water, is going to be my denominator term. I'm going to divide the 1.64 divided by the 0 0.250, and I'm going to get the molality. The molality is 6.56 molal. So now I really have all the components that I need to solve this problem. Remember, the change in temperature is equal to the K times the I times the molality. I already have the K, I already have the I, now I have the molality. Let's plug those in. The 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal, that's the uh, that's the K. The I is the 1, the 6.56 molal is the molality. I'm going to solve this and do this mathematically. I'm going to get 12.2 degrees Celsius. Now remember, the freezing point for water, the solvent, is zero. So it's the freezing point depression. That's why we're going to do a subtraction here. So it's zero minus the 12.2. And that will get me negative 12.2 degrees Celsius. So that means if I have 250 grams of water and I add 102 grams of ethylene glycol to it, this solution will not freeze until it reaches negative 12.2 degrees Celsius. All right, hopefully you're good with that. Let's do a boiling point elevation problem. I can't wait. Can you? Bam! We're going to calculate the boiling point of a solution containing 108 grams of sodium chloride and 150 grams of water. Again, a tabled value from your textbook is going to be the constant for the boiling point, and that is 0.512 degrees Celsius per molal. Again, what we need to do is figure out what the solute is and what the solvent is. I'm going to compare the 108 and the 150. Which one is the most? Which one is the least? The least is the solute. The most is the solvent. That's why I got the 108 grams of sodium chloride and the 150 grams of water as being the solute and the solvent, respectively. Okay, here we go. The boiling point is equal to the normal boiling point plus the change in temperature of the boiling point. The change in temperature of the boiling point is equal to the constant for the boiling point, the solvent, times the I, the Van't Hoff factor, times the molality. Uh, what is the normal boiling point for the solvent? It's water, and the normal, normal boiling point for water is 100 degrees Celsius exactly. The constant for the solvent is 0.512 degrees Celsius per molal, and the solute itself is sodium chloride. And if you look back to the lecture on the Van't Hoff factor calculations, sodium chloride was one of the ones that you had to do. And there are, there's a cation and there's an anion in sodium chloride, unlike the ethylene glycol, which was a molecule. So how many cations do I have? One. How many anions do I have? One. So I'm going to add the number of cations, that's one, plus the number of anions, that's one, and I'm going to get two. So the Van't Hoff factor for sodium chloride is two. Now I need to solve for the molality, and the molality is equal to the moles of sodium chloride divided by the kilograms of water. So just like on the previous problem, I'm going to do something similar. We're going to go on to the next slide. We're going to solve for the molality, and then we have all the rest of the values of what we need to do to plug into this equation to get the boiling point. So here we go. Bam! The molality is equal to the moles of sodium chloride divided by the kilograms of water. To get the moles of sodium chloride, I'm going to take the 108 grams of sodium chloride divided by the molar mass, and that will give me 1.85 moles of sodium chloride. That's maintaining the three significant figures there. I'm going to take that 150 with the decimal grams of water and convert that into kilograms with dividing by 1,000. 
So my numerator term here is 1.85. My denominator term is 0 0.150. I'm going to divide those two numbers, and this is what I get. I get 12.3 molal. Now I'm going to start plugging into the change in temperature of the boiling point. That's the constant times the vent hall factor times the molality. And here those values are. That's 0.512 degrees Celsius per molal for the constant, 2 for the vent hall factor, and 12.3 for the molality. That will give me this product here of 12.6 degrees Celsius. This 12.6 degrees Celsius is my change in temperature of my boiling point. Remember, the boiling point of the solvent was 100. So it's a boiling point elevation, so it's a plus sign in between these two. That's why the plus sign. And I'm going to sum these up, and now I'm going to get 112.6 degrees Celsius. So that means if I have 150 grams of water and I add 108 grams of sodium chloride to it, it will not boil until it reaches 112.6 degrees Celsius. It's a pretty high boiling point. That's why it's a boiling point elevation. When you add a solute to any solvent, it will elevate the boiling point. I am the crazy hack chemist. That was an intense little bit of boiling point and freezing point depression problems. You need to redo those two problems here with boiling point and freezing point. Okay, make sure you review the previous lecture so that you know what the individual components are. I will see you next time, and I can't wait for the mole fraction, baby. And I'm the big cheese.